Can you uh, give us a visual of, uh, you know, your, your dad starting the business? Uh, what, what gave him the courage to go out on his own and start a business when he had a great job with Skidmore? That, that, was, that was a big outfit. I'm sure he had a great job there. Security and all the things you think about in America, right? And, and what gave him the vision of, gosh, you know what, I want to do it on my own. I want to build my own business. Or what was the opportunity that took him there? And then, and then all the way through when you got involved in the business about how big it had grown and then you know, where, you are, where you were in 2008 and then where you are today. Okay, rapid fire. You're you're not kidding with these rapid fire <laughs> questions, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so Dad started it. It's Skidmore. Skidmore's a great company. You know, we still work with them today. Uh, he ended up going over to Perkins and Will, which is another Chicago-based architectural and engineering company. Terrific company, doing some iconic buildings all over the world. And he became chief engineer there, and. Uh, he, you know, in an architectural and engineering company, the architects are the kings and the queens. And, uh -huh. and so, you know, he always wanted to do his own thing. He had a really strong following um, from architects, both within P&W or Perkins and Will and around the city. So he thought he would go out and try it on his own. And so that's what he did. He, you know, a company of one. <laughs> uh, and then soon uh, some of the engineers from Perkins and Will followed him. And, um, um, and then even the architects at Perkins and Will and Skidmore wanted to give him work. So he was really good at what he did. And so he, he was able to start it that way and, and, uh, and grew our company into the largest mechanical and electrical engineering firm in Chicago. And so most of our business was in the Chicago area, working in commercial office buildings and, and doing some healthcare. So that's how it, that that's how well, and, and most people would say holy cow man you're doing you're all this big work all over chicago one of the greatest cities in the in the world uh, you know can you handle all that and and, and uh, what was your mindset to, as you came on board to say this is as, as big as it should ever get or man let's let's grow it uh, nationally globally and all that i mean how, how that happened well every every generation looks at things differently and so when i joined in 1984 you know we were on the it was sort of the the cusp of the analog era and the digital era, meaning we still did most of our drawings manually. And so, um, you know, the pep talk my dad gave when I, and I had interned him for, with some summer, you know, for some summers and, and heard about the business just growing up. So I kind of knew, you know, what I was getting into, but he would say that, you know, he was the principal of the firm and the principals give their time away and you really make money on the people doing the production of the drawings. And, you know, the guys in the bullpen. And that's what we sat out in this open area, drew drawings, and, and that's how the business worked, right? Um, but slowly, and then really quickly, that began to change. Because in the digital world, the, uh, uh, you know, things go a lot quicker. All of a sudden, the drawings, the production of the drawings became more of a commodity every year. And, and then, you know, introduced globalization that came later where information and capital gets transferred instantaneously. Now there's a whole uh, huge labor market where they can produce drawings a lot cheaper than we can here. And so, you know, I was observing all of this. I was saying, you know, and I was, I was doing the jobs. I did a lot of mechanical engineering jobs. I first designed buildings, ran projects, ran the mechanical department, um, then got kicked up stairs, you know, started running more of the business and I could see the margins being not crushed, but in some cases, you know, they weren't growing and, and because of this fact. And so I felt like there was a need to transform the business. We have to look, we have to look at it differently. And, and again, that's how every generation looks at it differently. And that's when, um, you know, around that time, 96, 97, um, I started putting some changes in place to transform the business, to become m more global, get, I, getting out of the commodity engineering business, going into more um, complex things mm -hmm. where it, it, it wasn't so fee driven. And, and, and it, I can give you an example that we, we really got our start when, when dad started working with the Chicago Board of Trade back in 1968, you know, he would tell the story that that was the big job that 
put us on the map. And, and in 1968, the Board of Trade was an old building even then. Sure. They were renovating it. None of the incumbent firms wanted it. It was a really messy job. He was hungry. He wanted work. So he got it, did a great job. And what we ended up doing was at all of the exchanges in Chicago, because at that time, if you, if you look back, Chicago became a big futures and options market. Um, we kind of owned the derivatives market here in Chicago, a lot of innovation going on. Mm -hmm. So there's new floors being built for the Board of Trade, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the Options Exchange, the Midwest Stock Exchange, and we did all of them. And so um, that put us on the map with financial services firms. We started doing more work with the traders, the market makers, the banks, all of that was a great ecosystem for us. But again, you know, what started happening to them? Technology. Yeah. And so the trading floors today are dying or dead. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we saw, the next generation saw, was the advent of electronic trading. And so if you think about it, you know, in one case, our, our one market is going away, the open outcry exchanges, but there was a huge opportunity to take advantage of electronic trading because it's all electrical and mechanical systems. That's, that's 80% of the cost of these trading floors that are being built wow. in offices. So we, we pivoted and went all over that. And so, um, you know, a lot of these jobs we can't talk about, but we started working with these high frequency traders um, that the market makers, there's a, there's a very large hedge fund that's based here in Chicago who, probably know that name. Um, we, you know, we've done 20 of their offices globally. And so that is how we transform the business by looking at it differently, understanding how our customers needs change, but also understanding what we were good at. Our, our, we were always good at, at working with financial services firm. We understand their industry. And so we adapted to the next best, next thing with that. It wasn't just doing the engineering though, because think about communications um, with, you know, in, the internet, <laughs> nobody knew what it was, or we didn't at least, you know, in, until the late eighties, early nineties. So telecommunications, um, that's, that's when it started emerging. And so in addition to doing mechanical and electrical, we created a technology group to, to do that. So, so selling more services to existing customers. And it's a natural thing to do low voltage systems with the medium voltage systems. Mm -hmm. So that helped us grow our business. And, and uh, I mean, I, I could keep going on and on. And then from that, um, the, everyone's got Facebook or LinkedIn or, or multiple things. You know, the financial services firms were the first ones who we saw who had these data centers, the backup data centers. Mm -hmm. And so we created a group called our mission critical group to design data centers. And, and wow. so, um, and now today, um, not only are we big with the financial services firms, but with three out of the five largest technology firms in the world, I would name them, but again, it, there's all these NDAs and everything. We are designing data centers all over the world for them. Awesome. And so that's how, that's how, again, we transformed the business by looking at it differently, taking some chances. It was not a straight line. You know, it wasn't like, hey, let's just go do this and everything's going to work out perfectly. Lots of bumps and bruises along the way. 